Hi guys, welcome back. Now you've probably noticed that there haven't been any new videos on the channel for the last couple of weeks and that's because I was on vacation over the holidays visiting my family and I just need a little bit of a break from filming because as much as I enjoy this, you know, I want to just take some time off now and then. But I'm back in the Netherlands now feeling uh, refreshed and recuperated and I'm ready to start making more tutorials for you guys. So I thought I would kick off 2016 with this figure. This is a World War I French infantryman. Uh, he's by Foundry Miniatures. I've had a couple of requests for a World War I French figure, and initially I didn't think I had any of them, but I dug around at my bits box and I came up with this, this guy. Uh, he is one of from one of Foundry's older ranges, which means he's a bit on the small side. He's probably closer to 25 millimeter really than 28. That's not my preferred scale for working, but it is what I've got, so I'm going to be just, you know, dealing with it as best as I can. Now, in terms of what we're going to be looking at in this tutorial, uh, it's a fairly simple figure. The, the equipment and uniform is not that involved. Uh, a lot of time is going to be kind of devoted to dealing with the sort of the light blue-gray color, of course, which is really sort of the famous iconic thing about um, French uniforms of this period. To start off with, here are all of the different colors you're going to need to paint this figure. Obviously, I have not included the skin tones used on the face. That's separate. You can find how to do that in one of my other tutorials on painting skin. So first of all, we need to create a base for that uh, famous blue uniform. What I'm using here is a Vallejo Luftwaffe uniform World War II. It may seem like a rather dark color for the French World War I uniform, but this is only a base and it is just a nice thing sort of to build up from. So just make sure you get good coverage here and not too much of the black is showing through when you're done. In order to mix my first highlight, I'm going to be taking some Vallejo Pale Blue, which is really just white with, I guess, the slightest hint of gray blue in it, and um, use that to lighten the Luftwaffe uniform. Uh, and this first time, I'm not lightening it too much. Uh, you can kind of get a sense there how much less dark it is. There is even a little bit of the paint itself in the corner of the frame if you want to see it on the palette. Uh, at this point, I'm kind of going to just be applying a thin layer everywhere. I am going to be kind of leaving the dark base color really as you can see sort of down in wrinkles and folds, especially in the jacket and on the sleeves and such. And it's really important too on his wrappings around his legs. You really want to use that original dark base color to help define sort of the area between those. So, you know, that that particularly is going to require a little bit of careful painting, but you shouldn't have to do too much blending at this point. Just probably don't make your paint too very thick. I'm then going to continue the highlighting process just by mixing a bit more pale blue into that original shade. And now I'm going to start really picking out areas where I want light to be hitting. As you can see, like his knees and sort of the fronts of his legs and the tops of any sharp creases or folds. This uniform is actually pretty easy to paint because you've not got a lot of really big kind of smooth areas. So you don't have to spend a lot of time doing blending. You can really just focus on highlighting the bright areas and just leaving the dark areas down the cracks because you're not, but there's not a lot of areas where you have to worry about making a transition between really dark and really light. There's actually kind of a range of colors that are acceptable for the French uniform. I mean, I've looked online, I've seen a lot of photographs, both of existing uniforms and just drawings. 
and uh, you know I, I'm going here for sort of a more pale gray blue type uniform which you'll see sort of more faded but you also see a more bright vibrant blue so it's really up to you to kind of choose what you want and if you want to do a whole unit of these guys you may even want to consider mixing some uh, colors just to keep your unit more interesting because like anything else there were different you know factories making these uniforms there were different dye lots so there was going to be some variation and just wear and tear was also of course going to change the color what i have here is just the pale blue from Vivillea all by itself and i'm using it to apply sort of the sort of main high highlight on everything i'm applying it in the same way i did the last one i'm just kind of being a little bit more sparing and picking out edges and seams and really top highlights and especially when you're doing those wrappings you want to sort of focus these really light colors sort of just right along the top edges of them so that you can get this extra definition between them and give them also some sort of special definition I think that at this point the figure looks just fine. You could leave it as is, especially if you were pressed for time, but I decided just to do one final kind of super high edge highlight, and I made this by mixing a bit of white into that pale blue, and I'm just really just gonna touch this very gently, just a very thin layer on, really on edges here and a few seams, and I'm not even gonna do it everywhere. Just it's just so I can get kind of a little bit of extra emphasis here and there just because the more tones you can build up the better it's gonna look and especially since we've got uh, so much of one color in this model it's just really important that you you know spend a little extra time getting it to really look nice Now we're going to move on to painting his equipment. It may look like at first glance that he's carrying quite a bunch of stuff with him, but it's actually not so really hard to paint. Uh, a lot of it's the same color and you can make it even more efficient by sort of recycling some of the same paints to do multiple things. So we're going to talk about that now. Uh, the first thing I'm working on here is his bedroll, which sort of curves over the top of his backpack. Uh, I suppose these came in different colors. The ones that I saw most in examples were kind of a light canvas khaki color. So that's what I'm going for here. So this is getting base coated with a layer of uh, Vallejo khaki at this point. Now there's some other uh, elements to his equipment that you can also do in the same shade. One is his water bottle here, which seems to often be sh shown or depicted with sort of a light canvas cover of the same shade. So I'm painting it just with the same base coat. And then finally, the other thing I'm gonna base using exactly the same color is that sort of round thing on his back. And I was a little bit mystified as, at first as to what it was, but I found out it's actually a sort of a folding bucket. I guess they use that for entrenchment and stuff like that. So I'm gonna be also base coating it in the sort of the same way. The process for highlighting these pieces of equipment is fairly simple. What I've done here is I've grabbed some Vallejo Iraqi sand and I'm just going to s gradually and progressively lighten that khaki base color. So my first layer has just a bit of the Iraqi sand in it and then I'm just going to add two or three extra layers over top of that just kind of progressively adding in Iraqi sand until I've got a light enough shape. Um, now I would maybe say that your final highlight you probably want to mix a little bit of white into it just to get an extra light color because it does really look like this stuff was sometimes quite light in color but I don't recommend that you go too far with that and I certainly wouldn't say that you want to go with pure white as a highlight color here it's just a little bit uh, too much in, in my opinion so but I mean if you want you can change it up of course and you know obviously work in if you've got more than one of these guys you're painting do some slightly different tones and all of this stuff
Next, I'm going to be base coating his mess tin here, which is metal and usually seems to be kind of a dark green color. So I'm using a base here of German camouflage uh, dark green from Vallejo. Now here's where I'm going to get a little clever. I hadn't painted his actual backpack yet, as you notice. I mean, I painted the bedroll and the bucket and other things. You could paint the uh, backpack in the same color as those things, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to get a little variety in there, and plus some of the examples I saw of this uniform, the backpack was a slightly different shade. So I want to make it a sort of a light khaki thing like the other bits, but I wanted to have a slightly different cast, in this case a green cast. So what I've done here is I've taken some of that khaki that I was already using in my earlier step, and uh, now I'm going to mix some of that dark green into it to, ma to make it sort of more of a greenish tone, and I'm going to then apply that as the base coat to the backpack. Then I'm going to start doing some highlighting on both areas. So that color I just made as the base from my backpack, I can use as a first highlight on my mess tin. That's about right, maybe a little bit darker. And then in order to lighten it, uh, lighten up the mess tin even further, I can then just add in a dab of Iraqi sand if I want, or a little bit more khaki. Then in order to finish off the backpack, because we want it a lot lighter, uh, I'm just going to, again, be using Iraqi sand to lighten that sort of green khaki base that I just made. And you want to go pretty far with that because you want a really nice light tone. But this is really good because in this way we've managed to do quite a bit using only a few different paint colors. Now I'm going to be just working on all the other strapping and sort of pouches uh, on this figure. Uh, you see a lot of variants on this uniform. The equipment came in different materials and different styles throughout the war, obviously, but one uh, way you can do it, and, one, and, and this is a pretty easy way, I'd say in this case, is to just do all these other bits using leather. So pretty much all the straps that I haven't painted yet are going to get base coated here in German camouflage black brown, all the pouches, just anything, any sort of hold downs that we really haven't covered yet. The exception there is that sort of large pouch that he is carrying on his right hip. Uh, that seems to have been made of fabric. It was brown, but it was not leather. It was sort of just a brown cloth. Next, I'm going to apply a pretty general highlight here of uh, Vallejo Chocolate Brown, and you can see I'm just sort of smoothing it over all of the different straps and leather pouches and stuff. Uh, the paint's pretty transparent here, so you can kind of build it up a little bit. I'm also going to use the Chocolate Brown as the base coat for that sort of fabric pouch that I was talking about earlier. We'll go back in in a little bit, though, and kind of further define it with separate colors from the other leather areas. Now I'm going to continue highlighting the leather. What I've done first is mixed the chocolate brown with some cork brown. It's about 50-50 here, and you can see I'm kind of applying it in a thin layer, starting all the le kind of edges of the leather pieces and kind of building it in from there. On the straps, which are really too thin to do that, I, I try to just sort of apply the color to areas where I think there'd be a little reflection or the leather would look a little bit shiny and sort of pull it out from there. This paint is pretty thin too, so you can really build up several layers and have some areas where the color is stronger and then a little weaker in other places, which is really nice. I'm then going to just continue on with some pure cork brown, and I'm going to use that to just further highlight those edge areas, sort of brighten it up, and sort of just always dragging it in and keeping my paint nice and thin and light. And, and at this point, once you've reached just pure cork brown, you're really going to want to be focusing that light color really on areas where you think there's going to be wear or that for some reason that leather area is really shiny because it's, it's light enough that anything else is going to look a little unrealistic. Now again, I'm going to really cleverly reuse some colors I already had out in order to uh, finish highlighting that sort of brown cloth uh, satchel that he's carrying. Now this time I'm taking that khaki I already had and mixing it into the chocolate brown to highlight the fabric. And then I'm going to just take some pure khaki just over the top to just even brighten it up further. So again, we've gotten more sort of mileage just out of a couple bottles of paint. 
I'm going to do just some final really light highlights now on the leather by mixing cork brown with Iraqi sand. And this I'm really only reserving just sort of dotting it on places where I want just the leather to really pop out or I want to really emphasize that there's a lot of wear going on. Now for his boots. Uh, this is a little bit interesting because a lot of figures I paint, especially from this period, are going to have like kind of dark brown or black shoes, but not this guy. A lot of the pictures showed that French soldiers were wearing more sort of buckskin or this sort of more lightly tanned leather shoe, uh, which is uh, different from what we usually paint. So because what I want to get is sort of a lighter leather effect, I'm going to start out by base coating the shoes with a mixture of the chocolate brown and the cork brown. Though I'm going to be putting a bit more cork brown in than chocolate brown. Then in order to kind of highlight that, I'm going to grab the cork brown by itself and start sort of building up over top of that. These shoes are a pretty simple design. There's not a lot of seams or separate parts in them, so they're pretty easy to paint. You only just have to watch out for the area at the top where there are some laces. Uh, I would do recommend you keep the paint kind of thin here and kind of build it up in gradual uh, successive layers kind of to get the effect you want. You might even need to make some intermediate steps by mixing in uh, chocolate brown because the cork brown by itself might be a little bit too bright. Once you're happy with the transitions there, then you can grab some Iraqi sand again and start lightening up the cork brown sort of to make extra highlights like on the shoes and the heels and areas where a light would be hitting and the like. Uh, I do recommend then that uh, use a really fine brush to individually pick out uh, the shoelaces, you, uh, shoelaces. As you can see, I've left them just sort of as a darker area. So then, when I'm ready, I just go in and sort of dot on where they are, and you've still got that sort of nice dark base color in between them to really define them. And if you feel like you need to, you can go even higher with the Iraqi sand if you want to put a little white in there or whatever. But I personally didn't need to. I was able to just get it as light as I wanted just by really uh, keeping my paint thin and applying several kind of built up layers in succession over the somewhat darker base coat. Now so far we've been pretty good at recycling the same colors and just using them in different ways. But at some point you kind of have to change things up, especially when you've got a figure that has this much neutral and brown on him. You, you have to add in some different shades to keep everything from looking too samey. So for the uh, stock of his rifle, I'm base coating it with chocolate brown, which I already had out. But then in order to make highlights for that, I'm going to be grabbing some Vallejo Saddle Brown, which is quite a red shade uh, and quite different from anything we used before. So I'm going to mix some of that in first to the chocolate brown to make sort of an initial base highlight for the wood of the gun. You can see I'm just applying it there lightly, kind of blending it out. And then I'll just finish off with a final high highlight of pure uh, Saddle Brown. Remember, this is a pretty intense color. It really is very red um, and it goes on really strong. So uh, you'll probably want to thin it a little bit and really work with layers here to get the most out of it. And also just to avoid having to make other sort of lighter shades with different paints in them. Now the helmet that they wore had sort of a matte dark gray finish, so I'm going to be base coating here using German gray from Vallejo. Once I've got that on, I'm going to do some highlighting, but I'm going to keep it real subtle because whenever you're working with these really uh, dark colors and you don't want them to get light, you need to stay subtle really. So what I did first was I took and mixed some of that Luftwaffe uniform World War II that I already had hanging around into the dark gray and made a first highlight with that. It wasn't a lot lighter, but what it did do was add a really subtle blue cast into the gray, which looks really nice and complementary with sort of the other blues that we've got in this uniform and the fact that we kind of want to emphasize blue on this figure. Then I made sort of one final highlight and I did that just by taking just a tiny bit of white and mixing that into the color I already had. And it really wants to be a tiny bit. You do not want this to get too light. You want to keep it dark. You want it to be subtle. And you can see I'm applying that really like along the rim and the crest and just lightly on sort of the sides, but then really blending it outwards. 
Um, and I wouldn't really recommend that you highlight it a lot more than that. This is definitely one of those cases where uh, less is more. I, I, and I tend to always kind of go in this direction when I'm painting metal uh, painted helmets like this. Now let's paint the metal on his gun. Um, I am again going to be just using colors I already had, so I'm taking that the sort of last highlight color that I had already for the helmet that I just finished. I'm just going to mix some Vallejo Air Gun Metal into it, and I'm going to use that just to base coat all of the metal parts of his gun, the bayonet, the barrel, uh, the locking mechanism, all that kind of stuff. You might also end up with some metal parts elsewhere in the equipment. You can base coat those in the same way, though I didn't really have anything else except maybe one stray button somewhere. I decided at this point to go in with some Nuln oil wash and apply it to the metal of the gun just so I could get a little bit more definition between the different parts because I felt like some of that had gotten lost a little bit. Once that was dry, I went back in lightly with that original uh, tone that I used because with the wash the whole thing had gotten darker so I could kind of re-highlight it with the, with the same color. And then I took just pure gun metal and I used that again lightly to emphasize areas that I thought would be shinier like uh, the bayonet and uh, the bolt on the bolt action and things like that. Okay, so here's our finished World War I uh, French infantryman. Um, I really was quite pleased with how this figure came out. He was a lot faster than I thought he would be to paint and a lot more fun. I thought I was going to have a lot more trouble with him. It was going to be a lot more time consuming, but that really wasn't the case. Um, and I think a lot of that is probably just down to the fact that uh, I was able to, as I kind of tried to emphasize throughout the rest of the video, uh, cleverly reuse just a few paints, keep my palette limited, and just kind of you know, just work with what I had. And besides saving paints and you don't have to buy as much, it's also good because you get a more unified looking figure at the end because you've got those sort of same colors kind of throughout the uniform. In this case, I think khaki was really the color that was the star of the show because we really put it into a lot of different pieces of the equipment. And I think in the end, it really has contributed to this kind of very consistent look that you're seeing here. So if you enjoyed this, uh, tutorial. Uh, please do like it, uh, share it, leave me comments with what you thought of course, and uh, do remember of course to subscribe to my channel if you haven't gotten a chance to do so already. So uh, I think that is all for now, and I will see you next time.